Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we have some exciting stuff. First up, Donald Trump's former communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, made a shocking $310 million Bitcoin bet as the price source. Now, what's really going on here is this isn't the whole story. The story is what was revealed to slide decks to investors, which is going to show how big Bitcoin can potentially get. Also, U.S. federal regulator says that banks can conduct payments using stable coins. And at first glance, this isn't really a big story. When you, say, when you take a look at what could potentially happen with payment processing and cross-border payments, then it becomes a whole new ballgame. And finally, IRS to transition from education to enforcement, says former division chief. Well, we've been seeing this happen as time has progressed, and I'm going to show you just how bad it's going to get. But let's take a look at the market and what is going on. Today, we've got, what is it, January 5th, 6th, something like that? January 5th, 10.30 a.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. And if you've noticed, I'm doing a little bit something different. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a news every so often from the office because, eh, it's just good to change things up and uh, do some new things. So what do we have as far as the price action? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, Bitcoin just shot up 5% and we're almost back to where we were before. I think we're down like about 2,000 or so. So 32.4, but it's up 5% for the day, 20% for the week. And I know that when we went from 34.5 all the way down to around 29, 28,000, people were losing their minds like, oh, this is it. It's all gonna go back to, uh, you know, 10,000 or 15,000 or zero, whatever else people were saying about that moment. But uh, it just goes to show you that this isn't the traditional market. And if you're here from the traditional market, first of all, welcome. Uh, congratulations, you made it to a much better place. It's just that there's a little bit more volatility. So you have to understand what is potentially going to happen as time moves on. You're gonna see a lot of uh, peaks and valleys, three steps forward and maybe 10 steps back, but uh, that is just cryptocurrency. And uh, you have to understand that you have picked the perfect year to get into it. This is going to be, in a lot of people's opinions, not just mine, uh, a massive bull run, so we will see. Ethereum, almost at $1,100, uh, 7% for the day, 46% for the week. The problem with Ethereum right now is uh, the fees are awful. And uh, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I like to dollar cost average, and I've been dollar cost averaging Celsius. What sucks is that I am in the United States, and the only way I can get that is Uniswap. So good luck going to Uniswap to getting uh, any kind of uh, ERC-20 token like Celsius, because you're gonna pay through the nose as far as fees. Now I thought, Coinbase was awful, but let me tell you, let me tell you, when you go to uh, Uniswap and you're looking for you know, these different tokens to get and you try to buy them, it's ridiculous right now. It's ridiculous. And I thought Coinbase was bad as far as fees. Really, uh, Ethereum has some of the worst fees out there and it's only gonna get worse. So that's why I am also investing in the Cardano. So come on, Charles and the team, uh, hopefully you can rectify this situation. All right, uh, next up, uh, USDT, nobody cares about that unless you're an auditor. Uh, XRP, watch out, down a percentage point and 22 cents. This will be interesting to see as things start to uh, not only delist, but to stop trading on the uh, American platforms and exchanges. So we'll see if uh, Brad is right that you know 95% is done outside the US and how the price will actually happen. Uh, Litecoin, I don't care, 4.5%, sure. Dot is almost at $10, 7.5% for the day, 50% for the week, and Cardano coming in hot. Five, what do we got? 20% in one day, 44% for the week. And there's a lot of great things happening. Uh, if you haven't staked uh, with the DNU stake pool, uh, there's a link in the description. Uh, it's four to six percent uh, interest rates, and uh, we have near 100% uptime, and we're going gangbusters, and we're getting up to that saturation point. But Cardano really is that third generation. If you didn't see, there was an interview between uh, Charles Hoskinson and uh, Alex Mashinsky. It was from the Crypto Crow. It's like an hour. And a lot of it was just, uh, a lot of it was just the kind of back and forth stuff, but there were some gems in there about what is going on. And uh, it looks like uh, Celsius is going, to, is going to be converting over to Cardano. I don't, know the, I don't know the specifics, but they're going to start to work together. And Alex is right. He said, you know, he said Ethereum is just uh, the the fees to use Ethereum is ridiculous. And if Ethereum 2.0 comes in, sure, but they're still going to be played with a lot of problems. Charles made a really good point. He's like, look, you had first generation blockchain, which was Bitcoin. You had second generation, which was Ethereum. And you got third generation, which is Cardano. So um, 
hopefully it kind of rectifies the situation. Because if you're new and you try to buy anything on uh, Uniswap or use Ethereum uh, gas fees, it's ridiculous. You're like, what? This doesn't even make any sense. All right, Chainlink, 10%, Stellar, 23%. I don't know, but sounds pretty good. There's doing something with uh, the government. I think something in uh, Russia, not for sure. BSV, yeah, sure, 6%, 20% for Theta, 1.1 and pays those 14 and 22. The big question though we always have to ask ourselves is, are we beating Bitcoin? So this is on CoinGecko.com. I'm gonna switch it over to Bitcoin. And what it's gonna show us is if we would have just invested in Bitcoin, how we would have done as far as uh, for altcoins. So Ethereum, congratulations, giving you up 2%. Uh, USDT be down, which is weird. 6% down, Litecoin down, DOT, you'd be up 2.6. Ste uh, Cardano, you'd be up massively, 14%. Stellar, 21%. As we go down the uh, list, you can kind of see there's some really good opportunities. Synthetics and, and VeChain, which is on a tear. Um, VeChain was another partnership announcement, so don't sleep on that one. I actually own it myself. 16% for Uniswap. <laughs> sure. And down we go. So when you're taking a look at which ones to actually invest in, always do this just to see what could potentially be the next big thing, or not the next big thing. How are you doing against Bitcoin? Because what's the point? I mean, if you're if you just want to make some good gains, just invest in the Bitcoin. And uh, here we are again. I uh, I think Bitcoin will be at 150,000 this year. That is my uh, my pretty much conservative prediction. And we'll see how it all goes. But um, I've only can only dollar cost average so much into it. I have my positions now. I'm turning more towards the altcoins, more towards Ethereum more towards uh, Polkadot, more towards Cardano, uh, more towards VeChain, those types of things. Because um, if we're at 30,000, you know, we can only 5X from there. But, but how unlikely is it that Cardano can't hit a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, Polkadot can't go to $50? I mean, who knows? So it really just depends on that. All right, so that's what's going on in the markets. Uh, let's jump into today's top story. So this one looked pretty good. And it's a long drawn story. It's from our friends of the show, Billy Bambra. He's a pretty good writer over there at Forbes. And he's talking about Anthony Scaramucci and they're doing a Bitcoin fund, which is great. You know, $310 million, fantastic. Uh, Anthony's a pretty connected guy. Looks like he knows a lot of people in the space, especially in the traditional uh, finance market. And when you see someone like this go down, something like an Anthony Scaramucci, the mooch when he gets into it, and then you have other types of places like the mass mutuals where they put in $100 million, which is an insurance company. They're very conservative. And all the rest of them, Fidelity Digital Assets, the Paul Tudor Jones, PayPal getting in the mix, uh, MicroStrategy, we all know these things, right? But when you get somebody like really heavy traditional markets, and he says, you know what? I think Bitcoin's gonna be the next big thing. This is exciting news because this is gonna pull other people into the vortex that is uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. But it's not just that. Um, it's taking a look at who they're looking for. Who are they trying to get? Well, uh, Skybridge Bitcoin Fund, which is the Mooch's uh, fund itself, is geared towards wealthy investors looking for exposure. Minimum investment is 50000 You probably have to be an accredited investor, just how it goes, right? And uh, yeah, so if you don't have 50000 don't worry about it. That's okay, because you've got other places to get it. You've got, uh, you've got Voyager. Uh, you've got your Kraken, you've got every other different exchange. See, the reason why people do this, because the question always is like, well, why would people do that when they can just buy it somewhere else on, on the cheap? It's because people who are in the, the traditional markets, they need something that they are, they feel used to, that there's no really surprises. So when you have like a fund, something like this, they're like, oh, okay, so I don't have to store it, I don't have to do anything with it, you guys do all the things and then I'll pay a premium, great, I'll make some money on the side. Because if you're multi-millionaire or even billionaire, the thing that's really important to you is not how much more money you're making, it's how much time you're actually saving and money too, I suppose. So when they do these things, they don't want to have to deal with it. There was a story we just did about a week ago. It was, um, I forgot the guy's name, but he's the second richest man in Mexico. And he got into Bitcoin in like 2013, 2014, like a long time ago. And uh, it was through Grayscale. And he says, you know, I knew it'd be big. I didn't really know how big, but when Grayscale came to me and said, they're going to do everything for me, I said, sure, why not? It's a no-brainer. And they talked about how he actually, the way he made the most money was because they had a lockup period and he couldn't take it out because he wanted to take it out. He wanted to sell it. He wanted to short it, but they wouldn't allow him because that, those are the terms of the conditions. And he made a ton of money because he couldn't get out in 2017. 
And this goes to show you that sometimes smart money isn't that smart. All right, so this is the crux of the whole article. I don't care about the rest of it. This is the interesting thing to me. And this is from, uh, this is the quote from the Skybridge chief operating officer, Brett Mezzing. He says, Bitcoin is leading a digital monetary revolution around the world, sure. He says, believe, we believe the honest has shifted from why are you investing in Bitcoin to how are you not investing in Bitcoin? If you take a look at all the different treasuries and the public uh, companies and ETF-like companies that are really getting into it, nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. So when you have these companies like a MicroStrategy who invested like $1 billion, even more so now, and they doubled their money in you know four or five months, imagine making, I mean, where else can you make a billion dollars legally uh, if it isn't for cryptocurrency? So that's uh, when other companies are looking at this going, wow, wait, you know, we have all this money in our treasury and because the Fed is printing like crazy, uh, the value of the dollar is going down. We're just losing money uh, without really, I mean, without losing physical, physical money, we're losing the purchasing power of money. What can we put it into? It's going to be this. And I think this is why Scaramucci and these guys get into it. So this was interesting. Slides from a leaked investor deck reveals Skybridge expects a tidal wave of institutional capital into the Bitcoin market. It predicts hedge funds, insurance companies, and a long-awaiting Bitcoin ETF are coming. So everything's great about that statement, except the last part. I've been hearing about this nonsense about an ETF coming, and it's right around the corner. You, you can't miss it. It's going to happen. Since, uh, I mean, you can even look back in 2012 when Roger Veer was talking about the ETF is right on the corner. It's not around the corner. Um, Ryan Gorman, friend of the show, he made a statement and when I was on Alex Maschioli's show. He said, uh, you know, how can they actually approve an ETF, the SEC, when no one really has addressed the main issue, which is all the manipulation that is going on, not just in America, but throughout the whole globe? How can they do that? Because nothing's really been done. And uh, there was like uh, there was like the John Nigerians, uh, the Steve Ehrlich from Voyager, um, Ray from, from Paxos, or Paxful, where that exchange is, I forgot. And uh, they all were silent, like, it's a good question. And uh, I don't think it's going to be approved. So until they can deal with that issue, ETF is out the window. I mean, maybe, who knows, but uh, I don't see it happening. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece.